Okay, so let's do a full example now of how we could use a coordinate change to help us evaluate a double integral. So here we have this double integral, and we're given this region R, and we want to evaluate it. So the first thing we're going to do in this problem, and you don't have to do this every time, um, but this time, just so we can explain it, it'll be easy, I'm going to have you sketch the region of integration. So I'm putting this step one in parentheses because sometimes you can just jump to step two and three. Um, but okay, so we're going to sketch uh, y equals x, so that's this, and then y equals x minus one, so let me sketch all four of these lines. Okay, so this is now the region R. And so before we switch, I want you to notice it would be a real pain to try to evaluate this double integral in Cartesian because if I were to slice, let's say, let's say I wanted to integrate with respect to y first, so I have dy dx. If I wanted to slice parallel to the y-axis first, then I'm going to be entering along here, exiting along here, but that's going to change as soon as I start slicing over here on the left. And so you'll notice that I'm going to need two double integrals, one for the left region, one for the right region, and that already is going to be messy because I'm not even sure starting with y up here. If I integrate this with respect to y, what method's even going to work? We can try integration by parts. That looks super messy. Plus, my bounds are really messy. They're going to be functions of, of x. And so I think, or my inside bounds will be. So this is helping you realize when you get something that looks messy, either in terms of the integrand or the bounds or both, that we like to come up with a different way that we can chop this up. And so ideally, just looking at the shape of this particular one, I would much rather chop up my region along constant values there and constant values here, right? So ideally, instead of doing x and y, I'd like to shift my coordinates um, so that they line up this way. And one way you can see how to do that is try, and this doesn't always work, but try taking the bounds and moving all the variables to one side. So for my first bound, I get x minus y is 0. Um, for my second bound, I get 1 half x plus y is 0. For my third bound, I get x minus y is 1. And for my fourth, and I'm writing them in a different order just so you can notice something. Here I get 1 half x plus y is 1. And I did that because I'm trying to notice if I were to make a change of variables, like if I were to call, let's say, this v and this u, then my bounds are going to become constants, 0, 1, oh, let's see, I think I'm, oh, no, yeah, 0, 1, 0, and 1. So that's, that's really nice. Um, I could also look at what's going to happen in my integrand. And so notice I see an x minus y showing up right up in my integrand right here. So this is a good sign thinking, if I let that be, say, u or v, this will simplify my integrand a lot. And then as a hint for this particular problem, because I have an x plus 2y, coming back over here, it's actually going to be easier to rewrite that as, let's multiply both sides through by 2. So I'm going to get x plus 2y equals 0. Let's see if it's going to let me actually erase that. There we go. And x plus 2y equals 0, and then down below I'll get x plus 2y is equal to 2. And, oops, let's erase that. And you don't have to switch that. I just switched it because I noticed I had an x plus 2y in my integrand, and that was telling me it's probably going to make my life even easier if I let one of my new variables be x plus 2y. So we can let either be u or v. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to say let's let this be u. So let u bx plus 2y, and let v bx minus y. Um, this is not the only transformation for this region, that, right? We could really do any transformation we want, but this is a transformation that's going to lead switching my region here to a nice uh, rectangular one, which will be much easier to deal with. All right, so 
here's the change. So now we actually need to sketch the corresponding region. And we can see by the way I wrote it here, this is V, this is V, this is U, this is U. And so we can see that my whole new bounds, let's actually go along each side. Um, let's do this one by one. So this whole side here, where I have, start with Y is equal to X. This side right there, Y is equal to X, that's coming from here. That corresponds to V equaling zero. So let me go on to my picture. And I'm just going to sketch here where V is equal to zero. And then let's go, let's do the next one where V is equal to one. And that corresponds to, let's do a different color so you can see. That corresponds to this V equaling one, which is X minus Y equals one, which is <clears throat> this sign. So this is now mapping right to here. And this side in red is mapping over to here. And then I'm also going to do u goes from 0 to 2. So let's plot. Let's look at this one here. This is x plus 2y equals 0, which is the same as this side right here. And that's going to u is equaling 0, which I'm just going to plot right there. And then if you're thinking, wait, how is she seeing all this geometrically? <clears throat> Don't worry, I'm about to show you a way you can do it algebraically, which is probably what you'll do in most cases. Um, but in this case, I'm just giving you a quick overview. All right, and then this last side, which is right here up on the top, corresponds to this side where U is 2. And so what we found is that my region R, we're now translating it to a new region, we'll call it G, in the UV plane. And this region G is going to be much easier to integrate over because it's a rectangle. Now the problem that I have by switching to G is I've now changed the area for sure of the region. And remember, if we think of this as like the volume uh, or the signed volume of some mountain when we integrate, then I want to do these change of variables in such a way that I don't change the actual value of the integral at the end of the day. So I'm going to need to find the Jacobian to account for the fact that I have stretched and changed the region R into the region G. Okay, so one thing I need before I find the Jacobian is I'm going to need to solve for X and Y in terms of U and V, because we define the Jacobian in terms of parcels of X and Y. So we're going to come to this system, let U equals X plus 2Y, V equals X minus Y, and I want to solve this in terms, X and Y in terms of U and V. So one of the things you could do, we had similar things like this in high school. So in high school, you might have seen like 3 is x plus 2y and 4 is x minus y. And then we said solve for x and y. And the two main ways you could do this was either solve for one of the variables and plug in to the next equation, like substitution. Or we could have done elimination, where you add or subtract multiples of one equation from the other to get one of the variables to go away. In this case, uh, elimination's pretty easy, and so let's do let's do that. So if I just subtract them, I get u minus v is equal to 2y minus negative y, so 3y, which then is going to give me that y is u minus v over 3. And then I can plug that back in. So let's plug that back into this equation right here. Uh, I'm going to get, let's solve for x first. So this tells me x is v plus y, but y is u minus v over 3. And this is going to tell me then that x is going to be 2v plus u over 3. And that's just when I get a common denominator. Okay, so now I have solved for x and y in terms of u and v. If I didn't already have my boundaries, if I didn't already know what the region G looked like, I strongly recommend that you actually create this table to find what your new region looks like. And so you would take each of the boundaries that you originally had, y equals x, y equals x minus 1, and you're going to translate them to be in terms of u and v. And so it's important to translate the entire boundary, not just the corners, 
because it's not always the case that we're going to translate to um, like a rectangle. Sometimes you're going to translate to, let's say, a triangle or some other uh, curved region. So what's important, and we're going to see what they are, um, which we saw above, is you can literally replace y in here. So y is u minus v over 3, and x is 2v plus u over 3, and then we can simplify. So if we simplify, you're going to notice the u over 3 is going to cancel out. I'm going to end up with 0 is equal to 3v, which is going to tell me over here that v has to be 0, which is what we already saw up above. Uh, and the way we saw it was actually a nice shortcut way, which you can use whenever needed. The shortcut way we noticed was this is the same as x minus y equaling 0. And we knew we defined v to be x minus y, so that just gives us v is 0. That was the shortcut way we did up above. But if you didn't understand that or you weren't sure how to do this in other problems, you can always just plug and chug through and fill out this chart one by one. So I'll fill out the rest of it here just to show you how we get the boundaries. And then the idea would be to sketch whatever these curves are in the UV plane and set up your integral. And we did that above because we saw they all happen to be just lines in this case. So we're just going to be sketching or integrating over a rectangle. But you'll see other examples on the homework where it's not necessarily a rectangle. Okay, so here is this filled in. And it leads us back to the region G that we already found. And now we're ready to set up our integral. So next step is going to be to find the Jacobian. So we can rewrite dA. So let's do that on the next page. Okay, so now we're going to find the Jacobian. And we actually want the absolute value of the Jacobian to go in our integrand. And so we know what x and y were from above. And now we're just going to plug that in to finding our Jacobian. So recall, the Jacobian is going to be the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix of partial derivatives. So let's set it up. The partial of x with respect to u up here is just going to be 1 third. Partial of x with respect to v is 2 thirds. Partial of y with respect to u is 1 third y with respect to b is negative one-third, and that's going to give me a negative one-ninth minus two-ninths, which is negative one-third. And then that means that the absolute value is going to be one-third. Okay, the next step is to rewrite the integrand in terms of u and v. So as a reminder, we had our original integrand was two y, x plus two y over square root of x minus y dA, and we, just rewriting stuff from the first page, since this gets long, we had let u be x plus 2y, and v was x minus y. So noticing when we rewrite this, this is going to be the double integral over region G. My numerator is going to, is going to become u, and my denominator is square root of v. Again, if we hadn't seen exactly how it would simplify, you could literally just take x up here and plug it in and simplify, and take y and plug it in and simplify, and same thing with the square root, and they're all going to simplify to that. So now we're ready to put it all together and evaluate. My integrand has become u over the square root of v. The Jacobian is 1 third from up above, and then I can either choose if I want to integrate with respect to u or v first. If you recall, since it's just a rectangular region, it's really, well, my bounds are all going to be constants, so it doesn't matter which way I integrate. So let's do u first. u is going from 0 to 2. v is going from 0 to 1. All right, and now we're just left. And if you notice, this is now a much simpler integral, which was the whole point of doing the change of variables. And in particular, because now I'm integrating over a rectangle, uh, and my integrand is a product of a function of u and v, I can decouple this, which is going to make it even easier. So go ahead, put it on pause, see if you can finish out this integral. All right, and so we should get, at the end of the day, once you decouple, that you get a total four-thirds for this integral. So this was an example of changing a complicated double integral into a simpler integral over a rectangular region.
by doing a change of coordinates in terms of u and v. So let's close this by circling back and looking at how we can think of this in polar. Uh, and before we do that, I want you to think about, if you're asking how would I know what transformation to use, in general, you're trying to look for transformations that change your boundaries to a simpler region or that change your integrand into a simpler function, or, or both, <laughs> whatever's going to work. And so if you have regions with parallel lines like we had, then it's usually easiest to try a transformation of the form. Like let's say you have regions with parallel lines. Y is mx plus b. Then it's easiest to solve and get it as mx minus y is equal to b. And then let this be one of your, your new variables, just like we did. OK, so let's go back and look at how we can get the Jacobian, or how we can find what we found last time using geometry for polar coordinates. Last time we found that the Jacobian was just r for polar coordinates. And here's how we're going to see it algebraically. We can let x be our cosine theta, y be our sine theta. And I can think of x as, or excuse me, my r as u, and my theta as v. And then we can find the Jacobian. So the Jacobian, this time it'll be r of theta, is going to be the partial of x with respect to r, partial of x with respect to theta, y with respect to r, y with respect to theta, which is, this would be cosine theta, this would be negative r sine theta, this would be sine theta, and this would be r cosine theta. And then notice what happens when we take the determinant. I'm getting r cosine squared of theta minus negative, so plus r sine squared of theta, which is just going to be r cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta, which just gives us r, which is what we found last time using geometry. Uh, and so, yes, this is actually going to extend to triple integrals, um, but we're going we're gonna to save this because we actually are going to move on to triple integrals with our next lesson and then come back to how we could do transformations with those.